Well, good morning, and welcome to this service of Celebration of Life, which I've been privileged to do over the years at my time teaching here. And uh, although I retired a year ago, I got a call to come back, and I was glad to do so. So I am delighted to be with you this morning. Uh, I'm sure it's been a pretty intensive and busy few days that you've been here, and they've got a pretty intense morning limed out for you also. So this service is to step back from the intensity, step back from the busyness, if you will. It is a time to speak to the mind and the spirit at the same time. So together we will do this. Let us begin in a quiet mo moment of silence, for we are going to remember at this service those who have gone before us. Let us be at peace for a moment, and I will try to summarize our thoughts as we begin. Let us pray. God of life and of love, God present at creation and guiding the world through your providence each day of our lives, God of consolation when we need it and God of strength when we need it. We come before you today to remember those who have gone before us to hold their lives in respect as treasured gifts to our own lives. Be with us this morning as we recall the past and face the future in hope and faith. Amen. To begin our service, I have the privilege and pleasure of introducing a friend and a cl classmate uh, of yours from Harvard Kennedy School, the Reverend Martha L. Harris. Martha comes to us two weeks after being ordained a deacon in the Episcopal Church and looking forward in the near future to being ordained an Episcopal priest in the Episcopal Church community. She already is serving two parishes in Pennsylvania 
And it is the custom of this service to recall a wonderful piece attributed to President John F. Kennedy, and Martha will read that for us. Martha, welcome. On Peace by John Fitzgerald Kennedy. What kind of peace do we seek? Not a Pax Americana on the world by American weapons of war. I'm talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living, the kind that enables men and nations to grow and to hope for a better life for their children. Not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Not merely peace in our time, but peace for all time. Let us examine our attitude toward peace itself. Too many of us think it's impossible. Too many think it unreal. But that is a dangerous, defeatist belief. It leads to the conclusion that war is inevitable, that mankind is doomed, that we are gripped by forces we cannot control. We need not accept that view. Our problems are man-made. Therefore, they can be solved by man, and man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. Man's reason and spirit have often solved the seemingly unsolvable, and we believe they can do it again. So let us persevere. Peace may not be impracticable, and war may not be inevitable. By defining our goal more clearly, by making it seem more manageable and less remote, we can help all peoples to see it, to draw hope from it, and to move irresistibly toward it. Thank you, Martha. And again, I think I speak for everyone gathered here today as we offer you congratulations for what you've already accomplished in the ministry and will accomplish from here on. So. They'll all be with you. <laughs> when you come back the next time, we'll, we'll have another celebration with you. So the source of this service in the midst of the intense series of panels and discussions that you've been through the source of this service came from your predecessors, or maybe from some of you. They asked the school that there be a time and space for what has come to be called a celebration of life. The theme of it, in a sense, is memory and hope. Individual memories and collective memories where we name people that we knew here at school and who probably sat where you are sitting at other reunions. So it's a memory of them, but it's also a memory of our own lives. Memory is the way we address our mortality and the way we lessen the burden of loss in our lives. Mortality is a fact of life, but it is more than that. It sometimes gives us a sense of purpose and direction. John F. Kennedy addressed mortality in another place in his presidency. It was the speech he gave at American University in 1963. Some people see it as the very beginning of the detente that eventually led to the end of the Cold War. The speech was controversial, and so Kennedy never showed it to the bureaucracy. The State Department, the Defense Department, did not know what he was going to say. He and Ted Sorensen were the only people who knew this. And in the midst of the speech, he spoke about mortality. 
And he said this, So let us not be blind to our differences, but let us also direct attention to our common interests and to the means by which those differences can be resolved. And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future. And we are all mortal. From John F. Kennedy. As we celebrate people's lives, there's a guide from the past. In the classical literature of Greek and Greece and Rome, the way that you left a legacy was one of three ways. You wrote great literature, you exercised major leadership, or you had children. Children democratized the idea of legacy. The service is about hope, reflection, and direction. It is about gathering up the past and moving beyond the past. It is a sense of gratitude to the school, appreciation of what we've been able to do in our own lives. And so in a sense, following Kennedy, we have a chance to remember the lives that have gone before us, the lives we seek to live ourselves, and the lives that we seek to share with others, spouses, children, colleagues, family. One aspect that I always leave people with in this service comes from a 19th century Congregationalist minister here in Boston, William Ellery Channing. He once wrote a piece that he called My Symphony. And I'll bring my remarks to a close by citing him. To live content with small means, to seek elegance rather than luxury, and refinement rather than fashion, to be worthy, not respectable, and wealthy, not rich, to study hard, think quietly, talk gently, and frankly, to listen to stars and birds, to babes and sages with an open heart, to bear all cheerfully, do all bravely, await occasion, hurry never. In a word, to let the spiritual, unbidden and unconscious grow up through the common. This is to be my symphony, how we celebrate the lives of others and think of our own. And so we can do this together if you look at your program we have a section here where, in a sense, we will remember, pray, and reflect on the world around us at this time. So I invite you to respond to each of the invocations I offer. For, those who though, for all those suffering in the world, for those whom we have lost in the line of duty, for alumni, friends, and faculty who have left our lives much too soon, for all those facing economic hardship, for the difficult decision our nation's leaders face daily, And it would be in order to remember particularly the lives lost in Ukraine at this time. So once again, we wish 
them peace. And let us pause and reflect and be entertained by interlude.
So at this point in the program, I'll be joined by various representatives of your classes who will read the names of those who have gone before us in life. We begin with the class of 1972, and Roland Cole will read the names for his class. My class is a reminder that the impact of the Kennedy Schools extends backward beyond this time and place uh, in time as well. W. Bennett, James Bach, Edward Brown, Mark Chernyovsky, James Ferrer, Robert Havener, Ralph Rafe Henderson, Daniel Holmes, Albert Sue, Woodburn Key, Edward Keylock, Kenneth Kopstein, Kilby Lanier, Leon Loeb, Robert Maloney, Ira McCown, Harlan Moen, Neville Rees, Murphy Reynolds, David Ricard, Henry Ryan, Milt Smith, Julian Velasco Arboleda. Thank you, Roland. The class of 1977, Doug Lay. Benjamin Brown, Sylvia Chaplin, William Duffy, Stephen Faust, Frederick Fisher, Bernard Fleckenstein, Judith Gewandtman, Tommy Holder, Catherine Heyer, Andrea Kolodner, Mark Kleiman, Margaret McDonald, Delene McNeely, Terence Miller, Burl Nembard, Eleanor Pillay, Lydia Pastacek, Robert Serafini, Kathy Strombaum, Jefferson Trenton, Pamela Boncovery. Thank you, Dad. Doug. The class of 1982, Jeff. Ashford. Hayherson Alvarez, Kenneth Bastian, Sharon Beals, Charles Bobian, Zerfinish Bendo, John Bennett, David Bigda, Robin Ray Bofferding, Dorothy Burrell, Christopher Carrick, James Catterton, John Davies, Diane Domzalski, Joseph Domzalski, <coughs> Joseph Garba, Mohammed Gadami, Boyce Greer, Nicholas Gwynn, Richard Harper, Linda Haynes, William Hudson, Brian Huntley, Madeline Jackson, Harry Johnson, Leland Jones, Peter Quas, Joseph LaRocca, Arthur Lezen, Philomena Lupo, Phyllis McClure, Brian McGrath, James McHenry, Yoji Nagaoka, Nelson Newton, Humberto Najaim, Clyde Nora, Gajanand Pathmanathan, Beverly Paul, James Prout, Ellen Raphael, Stuart Reller, Sharon Russell, Thomas Savage, Miriam Sevy, Paul Schoen, Roger Story, Marion Thompson, Susan Tift, Robert Turner Jr., Emily Tuttle, Elaine Urban, Lucille Vincent, 
Meta Waller, Nicholas Watts, Claire Zimmerman. Thank you very much, Jeff. And now, return to the class of 1987, and Deacon Martha Lester Harris will read the names. Please join me in remembering our classmates who have died since we graduated in 1987. Yaakov Abu Bakar, Francis Kanin III, John Dempsey, Susan DeWitt, Veronica Doherty, Francis Finnegan, Jennifer Guntert, Russell Keller, William O'Neill, Brian Potmasil, Edwin Pratt, Margarita Rosenthal, Stephen Schrader, Raj Sheridan Peters, Charles Smith, Elizabeth Story. Thank you, Martha. The class of 1992, James McShane. Good morning, the class of 1992. Reginald Alcock, David Bishop, Christine Cunningham, Mark Devez, Owen Hardy, Christopher Kedzi, Christopher Kerr, Guido Pena von Borges, Lindy Ambrose, Liam Rector, Eric Rhodes, Sandra Ridley, Anthony Shinella, Praveen Shakir, Trevor Taylor, Otto Weiss, Agus Wirahadakusama, and William Wood. Thank you. Thank you, James. The class of 1997, Christopher Nichols. Manuel Cordero, Sandra Goldenfarb, Elise Mann, Tetsuo Okada, Michael Wrighty, Laura Wheelcock, Yoko Yukono. Thank you, Christopher. The class of 2002, Scott Talon. Teresa Mann, Edna Perez Corey, Nadine Romero, Carl Valenciano, Jin Lin Yang, and three names that are not formally on the program Brooks Douglas, who started in our year but completed the mid career in two years, Sue Williamson, we all know, and Julius Babbitt. Thank you, Scott. The class of 2007, Denny Tischler. Rosa Eftehari, Martha Parker Magania. Thank you, Denny. And the class of 2012, Laura Berkman. Jeanette Acosta and Christopher Osterhaus. Thank you, Laura. So, Kennedy School is not known for silence, uh, but therefore I'll ask you twice today. 
as all these names have been gathered together and as we remember our classmates who are alive but not here, let us pause again for a moment of silence and respect. May they rest in peace, and may those who are still with us but in different places live in peace. So I thank you for your attention and for your participation and for this chance to come together. I thank all those uh, from the alumni office who helped put this together, uh, and, and uh, as we bring this to a close this year, we think about a world in which things we couldn't have imagined have happened, good and bad. A virus that we couldn't conquer for, on the one hand, a war in Europe that we thought we had put behind us, but many good things that had occurred also. I think gentleman wants to say something. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so uh, I think we have one final postlude that will transition us out of the meeting. Anything else we're supposed to do? All right, and I will be available afterwards. <laughs>
Thank you, Father Hare, for a beautiful ceremony. Um, please join us outside for brunch underneath the tents. Thank you. <laughs>